Gompertz, Normalising the Abnormal Gompertz versus Normal, Part 3 With so many people reassuring you that the curve is flattening, lockdown is working, it's Gompertz, it's exponential if we let up, we need to get to grips with curve analysis. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. We have several videos specifically on curve analysis. Indeed, our 90 plus videos are in some ways the world's longest course in curve analysis, which means we're definitely not going to cover all of that material again. We would suggest checking out Chart and Stats Essentials, created based on requests to explain our comprehensive standard charts. However, to really understand the issues at stake with Gompertz versus Normal, and the principles that are key, it is worth looking at what we mean by autofit normal curves, and now autofit Gompertz curves. They're both humped, go up and down, which makes them safe, compared to the unsafe exponential which infects everybody and we all, or a lot of us, die, totally false meme. But casual, lazy or inappropriate use of the Gompertz may gloss over government actions and sadly may do so precisely because some people just want this to be over, to be just a contagion, just something they can get past and forget. I understand, but I can't fake reality. Governments do that. So let's look at what we're dealing with here, the core principles. The first and core principle is observation versus prediction. Observation is safe. Prediction may be anything from safe to utterly mendacious, fraudulent and propaganda. Ferguson. We won't go into Ferguson's claims per se, having covered them repeatedly, but there is one element that we'll touch on as it bears on prediction using curves. William Farr, 19th century on Wiki. The founder of epidemiology observed that many contagions appeared normally distributed, normal following a normal curve or normal distribution. That was a safe and key observation. Doubling every five days, COVID-19 will have infected 80% of the population by the end of May, is a prediction that Ferguson didn't specifically make, but the exponential meme that pushed the agenda was selling that claim. That was a totally erroneous and malign prediction, and it was accompanied by the lockdown meme and flattening the curve, all fraudulent and all discussed elsewhere. We inadvertently echoed far when somebody referenced his work and we were delighted to discover his original claim. Just so. We observe, we debunk the agenda claims because the government's own data shows that the virus simply doesn't behave the way they say it does, or indeed the way the official SI, SIR, SEIR models say it does. All fraudulent, all demonstrably so by looking at what actually does happen. Observation, safe, not prediction. The virus does what it does. The government reports what the virus does or is supposed to. Assembling the data from contagions, we end up with curves, daily numbers and total cumulative numbers. Curves for Ebola, SARS, flu, 1918 or seasonal. COVID-19 cases and deaths. COVID-19 infographics for flattening the curve. Ferguson's prediction. Lots of curves. And once you have a curve, a lot of curves, you can start to look at what is normal, typical, and start to detect the abnormal. That we have the normal, normal distribution, and normal, typical, is because the normal curve is so common, found in everything from height to IQ, that it attracted the name normal. It should hardly be a surprise that we find it in use here. Yet it isn't an official contagion curve even though it was the first such to be considered, by far. That is doubly or triply strange because it does in fact fit contagions very well. It has a very rational generating principle. It is closely related to the popular exponential meme. If there was one curve that perfectly fitted all contagions, fine, we'll use that one. It's going to be humped, likely sigmoid, a class of such curves, or Richards, apparently the most general of all such curves, or, lo or normal, or log normal, or logistic, or Gompertz. But as long as it's humped, it's not exponential. That works for us. No scary racing to get everyone infected, and then a lot of us die. Normal has several compelling features. It's incredibly common and well supported in, for example, Excel. 
It's an excellent fit for real contagions, pre-COVID-19 and COVID-19. It is closely related to the exponential curve and explains the erroneous and fraudulent early exponential data in COVID-19 articles and reports. It is symmetrical, so as an observation we can readily see how the tail differs from the initial climb. It is easy to auto-fit, handy when you're tracking 214 countries. None of that would be relevant if B wasn't true, but it is indeed an excellent fit and has extremely valuable characteristics, such as that growth declines at a constant rate, making it a true linear on log scale trajectory that we can use to detect, e.g. lockdown effectiveness. Again, so what? If it didn't fit, that would not be useful. But it does fit extremely well. So before we throw out normal for Gompertz, we're going to be very careful to see if Gompertz is indeed as good as it's claimed to be. And it turns out, surprise, that it isn't. But more on that anon. The last key element to re-emphasize is the CFG feature that both exponential and normal can be generated by a simple iterative or repeated calculation. Exponential is multiplied by a growth factor each day and normal is multiplied by a growth factor each day and multiply the growth factor by a growth decline factor each day. Now if we give exponential a growth decline factor of 1, it doesn't change, exponential and normal are the same family of curve. And it's not that COVID-19 or any contagion starts growing exponentially and then lockdown stops that. No, it stops of its own accord in responsible epidemiology. It is that COVID-19 or any contagion being normal, the growth factor or growth is declining from day one. It's just that 2 going to 1.98 isn't particularly noticeable. But within a week, if it's down to 1.75, that is noticeable. Exponential is fraudulent, even in official epidemiology. Quick demo, and then we do autofit. C equals initial cases, F equals initial growth factor, G equals constant growth decline factor, which is 1 for exponential. Thus day 0, exponential, C equals 1, F equals 2, G equals 1. Day 1, C equals 1 times 2 equals 2, F equals 2 times 1 equals 2. Day 2, C equals 2 times 2 equals 4, F equals 2 times 1 equals 2. And day 3, C equals 4 times 2 equals 8, F equals 2 times 1 equals 2. For a normal curve, we've got C initial cases, F initial growth factor, and G a constant growth decline factor of say 0.985, a typical number for COVID-19. Then day 0 normal, C equals 1, F equals 2, G equals 0.985. Day 1, C equals 1 times 2 equals 2, F equals 2 times 0.985 equals 1.97. Day 2, C equals 2 times 1.97, a lower figure, equals 3.94. F equals 1.97 times 0.985 equals 1.94. Day 3, C equals 3.94 times 1.94, again a lower figure, equals 7.64, F equals 1.94 times 0.985 equals 1.91. Now to prove that such a simple rule generates a normal curve, and to compare it to an exponential, let's run it up using Ferguson's seed value of doubling every 5 days, equivalent to a factor of 1.15 per day. Interestingly, for his ICCRT Report 9, Chart 7, Humped Not Exponential, he used a very standard G of 0.985 from memory. 0.985 is indeed standard, but I'd have to go back and check what figure he precisely used, and it's not material. 0.985 appears consistently throughout many countries' COVID-19 contagions. When you see how absurd this is, in a second, consider that you're looking at the simplest possible demonstration that Ferguson's output chart has nothing to do with his claimed science. He just wrote the fluff he needed in the report, then added a chart to scare the people of the UK and the US into lockdown. The report and the chart are not connected. This demonstrates that. Total, utter fraud. However, the second element connected to this is that, as noted, 0.985 is a real number. 
It's also basically 99%. So even though the growth of the normal, normal curve contagion had a growth rate 99% of the exponential curve on its second day, assuming first day was 100% or identical, the compounding effect, it compounds as a triangle number, hyper compounding or power of 1, 3, 6, 10, etc. And so it's barely distinguishable from exponential. The g-force rapidly crushes the growth factor f and the contagion collapses. They didn't mention that on the media, did they? So here's cases per day using exponential, red dotted and normal, blue dotted, starting 1st of March, ending 7th of June, or so, by which point exponential is up to 900,000 cases a day. Wow! Except, where's normal? The blue dotted. It's crushed at the bottom, so for such a tiny difference, 98.5% of the same growth the next day, the impact is massive. Hannington's agenda piece, The Power of the Exponential, should have been a piece on the power of the growth decline factor, to crush contagions and render them normal. So 900,000 cases a day and rising at 15% a day, extra 1.15 factor, bad news for Britain. And how did the real normal contagion look with its 98.5% growth factor modifier? This is priceless. Using Ferguson's claimed seed values of f equals 1.15 and a genuine representative 0.985 that is dominant for COVID-19, we get a maximum of two cases a day. Now that's absurd. It doesn't mean that normal is wrong. We've seen and will see how perfectly normal fits. It's just that Ferguson's seed values are a blatant lie. But we've covered that in other videos in depth. Let's just bump up the initial growth factor f to 1.7 so you can see the CFG model does generate a normal curve with g equals 0.985 or indeed anything less than 1. Now let's move on to the best curve and our first step is to find a convenient means of fitting a theoretical curve, e.g. normal, to live data. We could do that by hand, but for 214 countries, avoid if possible. However, the principles, whether manual or automatic, are the same. Every curve is defined by a formula and the parameters inside that formula. We didn't need a formula just now because we used an iterative process, but we're now going to use the formula. And if you're curious, search on normal distribution on Wikipedia. We'll assume you either already have or will shortly have familiarity with three key concepts mean or average, standard deviation or spread, and scale, the total count or population. Note, population here is not the population of your country. It is a statistical term for all the items counted by the curve. Total is probably a safer term. We can illustrate those concepts by borrowing the previous chart and annotating it. Now there's one other really important measure which I'd like to add, which is the peak value, illustrated here. I also want to illustrate a critical point if we change one parameter, which is in particular we're looking at standard deviation, we actually change two features. The curve drops peak value and it widens in spread. So we have four features of such a curve that we can observe and only three parameters to choose from. We can change three features, but we have to accept the fourth regardless. If, when we match to the real data, we fit for three and the fourth matches, then the curve is a good fit for the data. If we match for three and the fourth is off, then it's not a good fit. Jumping ahead, this is exactly what we're going to be looking at. The green and blue dotted, normal and comparts, are fitted to the mean, peak value and total and we have to accept the spread or shape of the curve that results. Dropping converts to focus on normal, you see that we have the mean agreeing with the data, the peak value likewise, 
and since the normal is symmetrical we do total equals two times cases to peak or two times deaths prior and one times peak to be exact. Now look at how the fitted normal and the actual data sit right on top of one another pretty much all the way up. That's a damn good fit. There's no doubt the virus was normal on the way up. Now we do the same thing for GOMPERS. Its peak date, uh, median I think would be the right term, rather than mean because it's not symmetrical, but yes we fit to a peak date and a peak value and a total, which is all the data added up. Again we don't have a symmetrical shortcut. Now at first blush it's not bad. Both are humped, both fat tails. What's not to like? Well, this for a start. Gompertz enthusiasts have given up a perfect fit by a normal curve to get a way too early no matching data prior to peak, just to get closer to the distorted asymmetric data after peak. And the UK data still gets away from them. Are they going to invent another type of curve, one that adapts to the UK? reported data, a special curve just like New York City has a special virus, the Cuomo virus. At some point the determination to discard a perfect fit on the way up moves from being enthusiastic and naive to delusional or worse, deliberate obfuscation and deception. Having started this series triggered by Ivor Cummins, generally excellent presentation, I believe he's merely reporting other analysts' work, we do our own, thank God, and is in no way intending to mislead. But I do hope that he and others will reconsider their trust in Gompertz and the people who use it, no matter how eminent. It's covering up a very basic fact. COVID-19 was perfectly normal, a damn near perfect fit for a normal curve to peak. So what happened at peak to utterly distort the virus behaviour? The virus has no conception of peak, politicians do. The virus doesn't report cases and deaths, politicians do. The virus has no agenda, politicians do. It's not rocket science. That's probably a reasonable place to stop for the moment. Reflect on that. I totally get that people want this all to be normal, but it ain't. The disparity between what the West is experiencing and what the rest of the world is experiencing is absurd. That's not the same virus or not the same reporting. And using or abusing a curve because it makes themes seem more normal, that just doesn't cut it. Not in my book. I don't blame Ivor Cummins in the slightest, he's a decent fella doing a fine job. But the people who are the experts that he has paid attention to, they have no excuse. They're either ignoring the whole real world because they're lazy, or because they don't want the absurdity of the agenda laid bare. Either way, they're culpable. And if anyone wants to dismiss my opinion, maybe put it down to conspiracy theory, then the government's data isn't opinion. It's their fact. The Gompertz and normal curves aren't opinion. They're well-defined mathematical facts. And the normal fitting perfectly up to peak and the Gompertz being wildly off, that's fact. So maybe it's time to face up to the facts that it's the government that has been doing the fraud and we who've been showing you the facts. We still have all the world's charts to show you, but that'll do for now. I'm Andrew May, the 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.